Hey everyone, a uh, quick video today uh, to get a benchmark on the upcoming solution for the 2R series, the large frame 2R series, and the 3E series. Um, if you're on my mailing list, uh, you'll know that that is coming very soon. Um, probably the very first uh, orders will ship sometime in December with some follow-up orders um, in January to February timeframe. Uh, that said, I haven't started work in earnest because I'm still waiting on the prototype. Uh, we've got all the design specs, uh, everything worked out with the engineering team, and um, we are in the production queue at this point. So that said, uh, it's, it's, we're in a little bit of a hurry up and wait mode, but I did want to get some, um, some baseline numbers uh, for this particular tractor that I have, which is a 2038R. Uh, again, this shares the same pump solution with all three E and two R series uh, for the large frame at least. The 2025R has a solution in market right now as well as the 2026R, which is a European version. So, um, let me take you over. I've got the tiller on right now. just bought this. I did want to get a little bit of video. This is a great little tiller. Uh, I bought it used. I, bu I basically buy everything used. Um, and this is a few years old. I have no idea how old it is, but man, it really chews things up. Uh, working at my parents' property, smoothing out some humps they have in their field. Uh, I was very impressed. The only worry I have, this is a five foot tiller. And while I'm sure that my one series is gonna pull it, uh, it, it definitely puts a little bit of a, a strain on the, this two series. So uh, I'm sure I'll have to go a little bit slower, but uh, I do think it'll work. All right, so what I have here, and just to give you, maybe if some of you are not familiar with this particular setup on the tractor, um, I was not familiar with it. You'll notice, let's see here, I've got this um, line, which is the power line coming up, and I've got it hooked into my, uh, my flow meter, and then it goes back into you know this power plus. And then we also have this tank line uh, here that is, that is open. I mean, it's not being used at this point. The way this tractor is set up is it uses the three-point hitch as um, to support hooking the backhoe to it. So um, for those of you who don't know or don't have the backhoe, there is actually a, a bar that goes on here. It goes between the two um, three point, bottom three-point draft arms, and you actually back into the backhoe and pick it up with the three-point. And when you do that, it's set up where this power is, is actually going to this, which is the three point. Um, once you've got it pinned on, you unhook this and you hook it to the backhoe and the backhoe's tank goes here and the power goes to the backhoe or, or the, power, the backhoe goes into here and your three point uh, doesn't work. And I, I'm sure they did that intentionally so that you wouldn't, your three point wouldn't be constantly trying to lift up uh, the backhoe subframe, but um, I thought that was an interesting setup. I actually originally thought when I saw it that it had, you know, some of the Kubotas um, you may see, I know on their backhoe, they have a three, um, a three hose setup. And then some SCVs have a three hose setup for a, for a drain to tank. Uh, on, on the John Deere's, uh, I've not seen that on any of the tractors I've worked on. Uh, it's been a straight power beyond uh, with no drain to tank. So, Anyway, if you're, if you're looking at this and you're questioning why I've got it hooked up, I've basically got it hooked up right now through the three-point circuit. Now, I could take this off and hook it into this tank line if I wanted. Uh, that would work just fine, but I went ahead and did it this way. So we've got this set up. I'll do a few different uh, RPMs, and then I also have a pressure gauge set up here, so we'll see what the pressure is once we're done. All right, so let me get this started up. Started idle. Idle here is 950, about 950. The 950, the implement side is um, two and a half. Just right at, I'm always getting some glare here. So two and a half for that. Let's jump up to, let's say 15, I'm gonna do, I'll do 1500. I don't know if I can see that exactly. It's pretty close. So 1500, we're at a 
I'm just over three and a half, probably three, uh, 3.6, but not quite 3.75. This is the rated RPM. So on this particular one, we're looking at not quite six. I would say it's probably something like 5.8, 5.9. Six fifty, almost twenty seven hundred. Looks like you can get about six point. I'm gonna say six point one, maybe six point one five. So, let's go ahead and do our pressure test. I've got this in the curl function. We'll do this at idle. About twenty four hundred. Go wide open throttle. So you get about a hundred psi um, for um, about, I guess, two thousand RPMs more. No, not quite that much. Fifteen hundred RPMs more. So get a hundred. PSI from idle. Um, actually, just for fun, let's see. Let's see where you'll get your max. So at idle is 2400. Let's just jump up to 1500. So I jumped up, you know, 500 RPMs at a time, and you definitely see an increase in uh, pressure at higher RPMs, which is a little bit funny if you think about it, given it's pressure relief valve and it should open, but um, that additional flow speed it, it apparently is gonna give you a little bit, but I don't know what, uh, I th you're talking about gaining uh, 100 PSI over the RPM range, not sure. Um, if that's going to make a significant difference in lift capacity is probably uh, in the tens of pounds. So um, there, that's it uh, for today. I'll keep this relatively short. That's the baseline for this particular tractor with my particular equipment. Um, it, that, that basically passes the sniff test uh, based on the, uh, the size pumps that I know this has. It's actually a little above um, what the theoreticals would be. And so I've seen that. I actually see that on the one series as well. Um, so, you know, I, I do want everybody as you're thinking about, you know, I'd, if you're worried about, you know, a few tenths uh, or even a half a gallon per minute ish, um, yeah, you know, that, that is what it is. But at the end of the day, the performance where, where the rubber meets the road is, you know, what, what, how does the tractor operate? And so, um, the, Solution that I've got for this, um, again, coming in December, is going to bump up the power steering by about 15 or 16%, I think, and it should bump the um, implements up by, I think it's something like 85%. So um, that'll put us in between 10 and 11 gallons per minute on the implements. And, you know, the steering, I don't think is really a factor, but just ha it just happened to work out uh, where uh, the parts that we were using and that what was available and the engineering team, uh, how they ultimately designed it, you get about a 10th of a gallon more per minute for the steering. So probably not gonna notice anything there. 
but at least it's not going down obviously and you know the amount of horsepower it takes to turn that extra tenth of a gallon is trivial so that's it for day today uh comment below if you have questions uh, visit hydrosplus.com for the latest info and certainly if you have a two series and you're interested in this or even if you don't have a two series or three series and you're interested or just think it's cool uh, feel free to uh to sign up for the the uh, email list that's under the coming soon uh, menu on hydrosplus.com and so you can get the latest information thanks for watching